Hey guys, welcome back to Overhead Athletics. Today we're gonna to talk about five of the best dynamic warm-up drills that you can use before pitching or for your baseball team. As a baseball player, we understand that movement must happen three-dimensionally, really in all three planes of motion. Because of that, we need to have multiple dynamic warm-ups. Today I wanna to show you five of our favorites. They're easy to teach. They're gonna get the most bang for your buck, but also because with these five dynamic warmups, you're gonna be able to hit a number of things simultaneously and be as expedient as possible in your, in your warm up protocol. The first one, we wanna hit hamstring hip flexor. Really easy, we, we really emphasize hamstring flexibility, especially for our youth athletes, but all the way through. So we lunge out, lean back, that hits the hip flexor, then reach to the toe. Lunge, back, then reach. Generally, we try to do about 20 yards of each, meaning 10 yards forward, 10 yards backwards, with each warm-up drill. The hip flexor is really important for running, for swinging, and for throwing. The hamstring, running, and throwing are really important to focus on the hamstring. For the purpose of the video, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of each one. We'll then go backwards. As we do this one, instead of joking around and having your athletes joke around, mess around with their, their buddies, we wanna make sure they're as focused as possible. Meaning, they're going through each stretch with some intention of focus so that they can get the most out of these. 10 yards each direction should be sufficient. Like I said, you wanna have a few of these. You don't wanna just do just these five, although I think if you were pressed for time, hit these five and you'll get the most out of it. There's number one, hip flexor hamstring. Number two here is a nice dynamic stretch of the adductor muscles on the inside of the legs, getting a little explosive movement of the hip abductors, which is really important for lateral movement, but it's also really important for throwing and swinging, which incorporates, incorporates a big movement in that plane. So it's a nice quick movement, push, push, cover as much distance as quick as you can. We'll do that down and back. Then what we like to do is called our pitch or push up. We do both of these on both sides. I'm just showing you one for the purposes of demonstration here. Pitcher push off, just like when I'm pitching, I lift the leg, load the hip, push, and when I stick the landing, my chest is forward, and I'm facing the target. So if I was throwing that way, lift, push, stick. You can see my back leg is back. I often see guys do this incorrectly by doing something like this. That's not the exercise. Cover as much distance as you can, get your chest forward. That's exercise number two. Number three here hits the hamstring again with a little bit more upper extremity stability, focusing on the shoulder blade. We start this one in a push-up position. Now, if it's muddy, you're probably gonna skip this one, but it's so effective, works so well as a warm-up that I have to include it. Push-up position, push the chest away from the floor, walk the feet in, as far as you can, keep the hands down on the palms and walk the hands out. We call it an inchworm. The legs stay straight. They don't walk at the same time as the hands. The feet walk and then the hands walk. Don't come up on your toes, stay down. So they do this for about 10 to 20 yards. It's usually relatively fatiguing to the point where you're not worn out, but you're pretty warmed up, maybe you got a little bit of a sweat going. The hamstrings are nice and loosened up. The core is turned on because you're in that push-up position, making sure you're pushing your chest away from the floor or the ground the whole time. That activates some of the important muscles that stabilize the shoulder blade and the shoulder complex, which are really important for pitching. And you get the back nice and warmed up at the same time as the shoulders core and the legs stretched out. A little bit of 
stretching of that nerve complex on the back of the leg. It's a phenomenal little exercise that you should be using. So let's say we maybe go down and back with that one. You don't want to do so much where you're burned out, but you need to do enough where you feel like your blood's pumping a little bit. Like I can feel like my blood's moving a little bit. If I combined this with a few other warm-ups, maybe 10, 12 warm-ups, should take me about 10 minutes and I'll be really ready to go for my more sport specific activities. So from here, if we think about it, we've started to hit a lot of things. What we haven't done a lot of yet is do any sort of rotational work for the core. There's a lot of ways to do this. There's some that we do with bands. We'll show you guys later. You've seen a lot of different ones done with lunges, with rotation. Those are fine, but I actually like to do a hinge or a split stance position with rotation. To incorporate some of this upper body trunk rotation, we see a lot of lunges done with rotation one way or the other, and those are fine. However, I would say that these are gonna be a little bit better for you guys. So what we like to do is we like to lunge and you rotate towards your back hip. So you turn towards your back hip, then you flex and turn towards your other hip. So basically it looks like this in real speed. Lunge, turn, turn. I do the same thing here. Lunge, turn, turn. Now I can get my arms into that. Lunge, turn, turn. This gets a little hip activation at the same time as a little core activation. This can precede some of the band exercises that we like to do to warm up through the core a little bit more. So lunge out, back leg straight, reach, front leg straight, reach. So you reach towards the straight leg. You could do that a couple times. The other variety of that that I like to do is sometimes with my youth guys, a little bonus here, hip hinge, elephant trunks. Because I get that hip hinge position which locks down my pelvis a little bit, I get a little trunk rotation. Now, there's really four, you could call it five. I've saved one of my favorite ones for last. It's a little different than what most people expect. We actually utilize something called the throwing sock pretty often at the OAI. I feel it's a great dynamic warm up. It's gonna activate the rotator cuff in a little different fashion, and it's very specific to the throw. These throwing socks cost around 30 bucks, 25 bucks. They strap around the forearm, and they're gonna give us a more throwing specific warm up than some of these more dynamic warm ups we've done thus far. All phenomenal tools. I'm gonna to show you another way to do it without this, if you don't have one of these, although they're really cost effective. And they're extremely effective training tools. They're great in the winter months here in Michigan where we can't get outside because of the snow, but they're good in the dorm room for college guys, all sorts of things. So I got a baseball inside of the sleeve, you can hear it. But I'm holding that baseball in a fastball grip and I'm gonna start just going through my throw now we always have an emphasis on throwing mechanics because we want to reinforce the mechanics that we want to see on the field. So what we do here is we got our glove, we get in an athletic stance like we're guarding someone in basketball. The ball's in close, and if you're not sure why we put the ball in close, we'll, we'll cover that in other videos and we have in the past. Ball's in close, elbow is shoulder height, so we're in good position here. It's a big step, chest forward, and throw the baseball. I don't have to start fast, I can start really slow and intentional, and I can build my speed as I go, we might do 20 reps of this. It activates the rotator cuff in a little different fashion and teaches us to get our chest forward and throw the baseball properly. We can also do some full pitches here. Whatever we wanna do, but this thing is a great little training tool for not only mechanics to warm up our shoulder. Okay, if you don't have one of these, you got a couple options. Grab your glove and put a baseball in this hand or a weight in this hand, whatever you wanna do. It's not gonna be quite the same, but it's gonna work well. We call these holds. With the glove moving around, I actually like it a little more. You grab the thumb of your glove and you can go through those same throws. So you get your guys in the line, all your, all your athletes, and you're gonna go through holding the glove. Now, if you wanna make it more challenging, hold the baseball and the glove simultaneously or increase your speed. Maybe you wanna do some shuffle steps for your position players or some pitch-like throws for your pitchers. But another way to train the shoulder, get a dynamic warm-up in 
and start to transition into your more on-field like or more sport specific activities. If you guys like these five warm-up drills, hit the thumbs up to the channel. We're publishing here two times a week, trying to bring you guys the best possible content as far as physical therapy, arm care, baseball training, so that you can stay healthy on the field, but also increase your performance, get to the next level, and throw a little faster. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Max Wardell, and we'll see you guys in the next video.